So I'm Robert Haas, and this is my talk, Parallel Query Has Arrived. Um, for anyone who went to New York and is wondering how similar this talk is to the one that I gave in New York, the answer is about one-third similar. So you can make your decision to stay or go on that basis. Um, so Parallel Query is a feature that I and others have been working on developing for about three years now, and I'm really pleased that uh, in PostgreSQL 9.6, it's actually going to be a user visible feature as opposed to a bunch of code that could be used by extensions, but uh, not otherwise. Um, and in this talk, I'm going to give a brief overview of the current capabilities that we have in 9.6. I'm going to spend a fair amount of time talking about the architecture of Parallel Query. In other words, what are the building blocks, the pieces of code that go into making Parallel Query what it is. Um, I added that section to this talk because I know that there are, are probably quite a few people in the room who write code, and uh, you could help write some code. That would be great. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, improvements for opportunities for improvement of parallel query. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about some very light TPCH testing that I did. Um, that part is also on my blog and also what I mostly talked about in New York, so I'm going to leave that for the end and cover it somewhat briefly. Um, if people have questions, just uh, raise your hand and uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to notice that. So what is the state of parallel query in PostgreSQL 9.6? Um, we can do scans in parallel joins in parallel, and aggregates in parallel, which sounds pretty good, but there are significant limitations in all three cases, which is not as good. Um, the scan on the driving table needs to be a parallel sequential scan. You can use indexes from s elsewhere in the parallel query plan, but the scan on the driving table has to be a parallel sequential scan, uh, not an index scan or an index only scan or a bitmap heap scan, which is an unfortunate limitation. Um, in terms of joins, uh, the, one of the big limitations is that we cannot do merge joins in parallel yet. Um, the merge join algorithm is not obviously parallelizable. Uh, and we can do hash joins and nested loops, but if we do a hash join, each worker needs to build its own copy of the hash table, which is not ideal because that means that each worker is using <coughs> memory and CPU time, and rather than sharing the work, you're redoing the work. Aggregates have to be plain, simple aggregates, not fancy things like ordered set aggregates or window aggregates. Um, and the particular aggregate that you're using has to have some special support functions which allow it to be performed in parallel. Um, and uh, those functions have been added to most of the numeric types of aggregates that are part of uh, the core of PostgreSQL, like count and max and things like that, average. Uh, but if you're using something uh, else or something that's not part of core, then those support functions might be absent, in which case your aggregate will not be able to be done in parallel. Everything on this slide is a slight oversimplification. But this gives you the basic gist of it. Um, so here's an example of what a good query plan looks like. This is a query that uh, parallelizes very well with only the things that we already have, not requiring other things that we don't have yet. Um, and so uh, down at the bottom, you'll see that we've got a nested loop fed by a parallel sequential scan. So there's that parallel sequential scan on the driving table. Each worker will get a subset of the rows. It will perform the nested loop join for the subset of the rows that it gets. Um, it will do the index probe for each of the rows that it pulls out of the parallel sequential scan. Um, and then that will be fed up to a partial hash aggregate, uh, where we will aggregate the rows that that worker sees. But we're not done aggregating because we need to have each group of output rows include all the rows that all the workers see, not all the rows that a single worker sees. So the gather node is where parallelism ends, 
At that point, all the rows generated by the individual workers are brought back to the leader. Uh, and then the leader performs a finalized aggregate step. In this case, it shows a group aggregate uh, to combine the partial results for each group from the workers into a final set of results. And then this plan happens to have a limit node at the top, which does exactly what a limit node normally does. So this is the good case. This is what we'll have, we hope will happen uh, with our queries. Almost all the work is being done below the gather, which means that it's parallel. The only thing we're doing above the gather is sorting six rows and then aggregating six rows and performing a limit, which is, which is not a lot of work. Questions on that? So the question is, does the parallel sequential scan get preferred over an index scan? Um, during planning, the planner is going to consider all of the possible plans and try to decide which one is cheapest. So no, there's not something that unduly favors the parallel sequential scan. Um, the parallel sequential scan is considered along with a plain old sequential scan not using parallelism, and it's the index scan option is considered, and all of those options are considered and we just pick whichever one seems like it's the cheapest, which is likely to be a parallel sequential scan if we've got a big table and we don't have an index that is going to allow us to exclude a significant portion of the rows. If we need to scan a large table uh, and we can't use an index very well, then parallel sequential scan is gonna look good. Does that make sense? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so there's a whole, that's the basic idea, but there's a whole bevy of limitations. Um, your parallel queries have to be entirely read-only, even the non-parallel portions. Uh, there are no suspended queries, so if you use a cursor, you're not getting a parallel query plan. The serializable isolation level is not supported, uh, and any functions that are labeled parallel unsafe, which is the default, will cause parallelism to be ruled out for that entire uh, query. Um, there are also a bunch of things that are restricted. They don't completely kill the idea of parallelism in a query, but the part of a query that does these things cannot be done in parallel. Um, so only the leader can access temporary tables, scan common table expressions, scan foreign tables, unless you miraculously find a foreign data wrapper that's been updated with parallelism support, um, scan plan nodes with init plans or subplans attached, scan a subquery scan or call parallel restricted functions. <laughs> Most of those are limitations that we should really try to get rid of. Uh, and the trick is that somebody has to do the work, um, which I'm hoping will happen eventually, either because I will find time or someone else will find time, but uh, not yet. I'm not particularly good at making diagrams, but I worked fairly hard on making this diagram to try to explain the overall architecture that goes into executing a parallel query. I left out the parts that pertain to the planner, um, mostly because they wouldn't fit nicely on the slide. and They're not actually, wouldn't actually make an ad interesting addition to what's listed here. The arrows are intended to indicate dependencies they're not 100% accurate, but they're pretty close. An arrow from one box to another box means that the thing where the arrow starts depends on the thing that the arrow points to. And the color coding is just meant to divide this stuff up into groups of related pieces of functionality. Um, so I'll go through these in more detail, but basically the purple stuff in that corner over there, um, my left, your right, uh, is the sort of core, most basic facilities. Uh, the yellow stuff over here in the other corner is message passing infrastructure for the leader and the workers to exchange messages. Uh, the blue things are sort of general parallelism infrastructure, not specifically related to parallel query, just parallel stuff. Right now, the only thing we have is parallel query, but hopefully we're going to have parallel other things soon. Um, and then the green stuff at the top is uh, the stuff that is specifically related to running queries 
in parallel. And that's actually both a small portion of the code overall and the place where there's the most interesting additional work to be done to improve this facility in the future. So the purple stuff, we have dynamic background workers, which means that you can have the postmaster launch background worker process for you. Um, previously, we had background workers, but they could only be launched at startup. Now they can be launched uh, on the fly as the system is running, um, which is uh, very important for parallel query because those background workers are going to become the worker processes for parallel query. Um, dynamic shared memory gives you a chunk of bytes that's totally unorganized uh, that you can use for anything you want and that multiple processes can all access, not necessarily at the same address, but they can all access the same bytes. Um, and to provide some very primitive or organization of that, we have this thing called the shared memory table of contents, which is just a very simple scheme for carving that dynamic shared memory segment up into numbered chunks. So you can say, where's chunk number four? It says, here you go. And so you can find particular bits of data wherever they're spread throughout that shared memory segment. Questions on this? So uh, the second category of things that are part of parallel query are a set of messaging facilities. Um, the core piece of technology here is a shared memory message queue or SHMMQ, which just knows how to pass opaque messages between two processes using a caller provided chunk of shared memory. So it doesn't know what the, kind of, what the messages are. It doesn't care what the messages are. They're just, here's a message of length n. Here are the bytes please send it to the other guy. If the message is longer than the buffer, then it'll wrap around and we'll have to wait for the other guy to read some data before we can send some more. Uh, but eventually the whole message will be sent. Um, if the messages are shorter than the buffer, that will perform a lot better. We can pack multiple messages into the buffer, uh, which is much more efficient. And this infrastructure is used for two main things. The first is error and notice forwarding. Uh, if an error occurs in a parallel worker while we're executing a parallel query, then the whole query needs to error out, just as if that error occurred in the leader. And the worker doesn't have any place to send that error message directly. It's not connected to the client. The leader, if it had an error, could just send it straight to the client, but the worker cannot do that. It's not connected to the client. So it sends the message instead to a shared memory message queue uh, using this error notice forwarding code and the leader reads that error or notice message back out there and uh, rethrows the same message. So for those who uh, are familiar a little bit with our coding conventions, anything that's reported via e-report or e-log is going to go through this error notice forwarding mechanism if it happens in a worker. Um, and then the other thing we need to pass between uh, the workers and the leader are tuples. And the thing that receives tuples from the executor is called a dest receiver. So we have a new kind of dest receiver that knows how to write tuples into a shared memory message queue, along with a little bit of metadata and control information. And then the leader uses something called a tuple queue reader to pull the tuples back out of the queue. So that's how the tuples get between the two things. So every Parallel worker is connected to the leader by two separate queues, one for errors and notices and the other for tuples. Um, so general parallelism support. Um, the main core thing here is the parallel context that will spin up a bunch of workers for you, uh, sort of put those use workers in a useful state run some C code that you, the user of the parallel context facility, tell it that you'd like it to run, uh, and then ensure that everything shuts down in a timely fashion. Um, what do we mean when we say that it puts the workers in a useful state? Well, it puts the workers into a state that is roughly similar to the state that the backend, the, the main backend is in, so that they can run most PostgreSQL backend code and have the same things happen that would happen if that same code were run in the leader process. 
Um, they load the same dynamic shared libraries. They have the same gook values. They've become part of the same transaction with the same snapshot and the same combo CID mappings. And they forward all their errors and notices back to the leader. Um, all of that stuff is taken care of by the parallel context uh, working with the state synchronization code. And then finally, a little bit controversial, we've got group locking here. The, uh, the leader and the workers are regarded as one entity for locking purposes, uh, which is a little bit scary, but if you don't do this, really bad things happen. You have a leader and a worker. The leader waits for some lock. Uh, that guy is waiting for the worker, for a lock held by the worker. Without group locking, that's an undetected deadlock because the system doesn't know that these two guys are related in any way. When you introduce group locking, those guys are regarded as a single entity, and the deadlock detector kicks in and does whatever it needs to do to resolve the problem. Obviously, this does impose some constraints on uh, what we can safely do in parallel workers, but we have quite a few of those already. Um, and then parallel query, this is the really new stuff that is all new in 9.6. Uh, we have some parallel executor support code which knows how to run a plan in each of a group of workers. It passes statement parameters to those workers. It passes instrumentation between the workers and the leaders so that things like explain, analyze, work. Uh, we've got a gather node which collects results across all the workers and merges them into a single result stream. And we've got parallel aware executor nodes. We say an executor node is parallel aware if it does something different uh, because it is in a parallel context than what it would do if it were run in a non-parallel context. Uh, so right now, sequential scans are the only node that is parallel aware, which is why they have to be used on the driving table of the query in order for parallel query to be used. There are hooks for foreign scans and custom scans. So in theory, you could make those parallel aware as well, but I'm not aware that anyone has actually done it yet. So those are the pieces. Um, questions on any of this? Yes. Ah, so the question is, it sounds like I'm talking about forking rather than threading for backends. Is that necessary? Um, I'm afraid so. <laughs> it's a bit sad, um, but uh, you know, in a process model, everything is unshared by default unless you go to a lot of work to make it shared. And in a threaded model, everything is shared by default unless you go to a lot of work to make it unshared. And uh, PostgreSQL has had a process model for a very, very long time. And there's an awful lot of stuff that uh, thinks that it is not shared. Um, the memory allocation infrastructure, the, um, the whole way that backends talk to each other assumes a single thread per process. Um, the error reporting infrastructure. So I had at a very early stage in this project to decide whether we were going to try to go and make all of the backend code thread safe or whether we were going to try to share enough state that we could do useful computation in the worker. And after thinking about that for about 316 milliseconds, I decided that this way was going to be way easier. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, this is necessary. OK. Um, so the opportunities for improvement here are mostly in the green stuff. Um, the gather node basically works. Uh, it brings back streams of tuples from all the workers, uh, but it would be nice to have a gather merge variant that preserves the sort order. So right now, even if the workers were to generate data in some order, like they sorted it before they sent it back to the leader, 
the leader would just read from the workers in any old order that the tuples happen to come back in, and the sort order would be destroyed. Um, you might like to have a way that you could uh, avoid that so that you don't have to resort the data in the, in the leader. Um, in the Department of Parallel Executor Support, uh, one big thing is that it would be good if we could do parallelism uh, on nodes that have an init plan or a sub plan uh, to be scanned by a worker. Right now that can only happen in the leader. Um, and it would be nice if a query involves multiple gather nodes to reuse the same pool of workers for all of them. Right now it's possible to write query plans where we start up four workers, run part of the query in parallel, shut them down, then start up four more workers, run another part of the query in parallel, and then shut them all down. And that's not great. Um, if you work hard enough at it, you can probably even get both sets of four workers running to the same query at the same time. But I haven't actually seen too many plans where that actually happens. Um, parallel execu aware executor nodes are, are where I think there's huge opportunity for improvement here. Um, so I'm going to have a separate slide about that. And then, of course, parallel utility commands, uh, I think, are going to be a big thing. Um, many people who are running PostgreSQL have OLTP type workloads, and that's why they picked PostgreSQL rather than something else. Um, but they may still have some bulk operations like create index, cluster, vacuum full, vacuum, um, maybe some others that I'm not thinking of. Um, and uh, those operations take a long time compared to their queries. So that's a particularly appealing target for parallelism uh, to ease the pain of those occasional bulk operations. Um, I know uh, Peter Gagan is uh, interested in create index and cluster. For those who don't know, he's kind of PostgreSQL's sultan of sort. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing that work progress. Um, but the key thing, the thing we really need to work on in order to cover a larger percentage of queries with parallel query is to make more executor nodes that are parallel aware. Um, maybe the most important thing of all uh, is to make more types of scans uh, parallel aware so that the driving scan can be something other than a sequential scan. Bitmap heap scan seems to be particularly important. Um, also, uh, there's a variety of other nodes that need to be parallel aware in order to get all of the performance benefits out of this that we can get. Um, a parallel aware hash node uh, could allow all workers to cooperate and build a single hash table instead of building a copy of the hash table on every worker. Um, a parallel append node could take non-parallel plans and get some parallelism out of it by just running each branch in a separate worker. So like if you have a union all query, for example, each branch of the union all could be fired off to a separate worker, even if those plans don't internally support parallelism, they could each be run by somebody different. Um, it could also load balance. So if you have three parallel capable plans under an append, you could put a third of your workers on each plan instead of what will happen today, where all of the workers pile onto the first plan until the, we're finished with that, and then they all pile onto the second plan, and then they all pile onto the third plan, and then we're done. Um, that works better than you'd think, but it's not ideal. Um, sorts, parallel sort, uh, obviously, uh, like I mentioned, Peter Gagan. Um, and uh, merge joins. It would be nice to do merge joins uh, in parallel. I think merge join and hash join seem to be the two algorithms that are most talked about for large parallel joins. Uh, but you can't use the merge al al join algorithm without modification in a parallel context. Uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, you have to somehow partition one big merge join into a bunch of little merge joins, and then you can schedule those across all of your workers. Um, so there's work that needs to be done there in order to uh, make the executor uh, smarter in all of these places. I think you know there are query planning problems here as well. Um, but one of the things I realized when I was updating my slides for this talk 
is that actually an awful lot of the performance improvements here will come from new executor capabilities. And then the planner will also have to be adjusted to use those capabilities uh, for different things. There are certainly independent planner improvements as well, uh, but there's an awful lot that needs to be done on the executor side uh, before we can really get the plans that we want. Yeah. Uh, so, so you say, the, the, so the question was, are there any interesting questions about how to carve up the space for the sequential scans? You mean like how to break the relation into, okay. Yeah, so the question is about how do we break up the uh, relation that we're gonna do a parallel sequential scan uh, and divide it among the workers? And the answer is that we do the simplest thing you can imagine, which is that we dole out the relation a block at a time. We still sequentially scan the relation, starting at block zero and going up to whatever the highest block number is, and each worker just claims the next block, claims the next block, claims the next block, claims the next block. Uh, we did experiment a bit. Amit Capilla, who's sitting in the back row over there, experimented with some other algorithms, but we couldn't prove that there was actually much of an advantage there. One thing you don't want to do is create uh, a lot of random I.O., which would be easy to do, right? If your parallel, sec parallel sequential scan actually divides a relation up into four chunks and you're scanning through each chunk like this, then you might be causing the disk head to seek around back and forth on the drive. Um, what we're doing carries the risk of defeating operating system prefetching logic if it's not, if it doesn't see that the scan is sequential when the reads are coming from a group of processes rather than from a single process. Uh, I have not had a report of that being a problem in practice yet, but I won't be horribly surprised if someone finds that that is a problem on some operating system. Um, but at least it does guarantee that we stay sequential. Um, and you might think that the synchronization overhead of having to dole out the blocks one at a time would be a problem, but it's such a tiny critical section that you really don't get any contention there. Josh? So, so Josh's question is whether different algorithms make a difference based on whether you're on SSD or spinning rust. Um, I don't have a reason to believe that that would make a difference, but I haven't investigated it deeply. Um, I mean, I think the main thing there is the same thing that we see in other parts of the planner and executor, which is that random I.O. cost and sequential I.O. cost will be much more similar on an SSD then they're going to be on a spinning drive. But I'm not sure that parallel query specifically needs to do anything to take that account. I think that's mostly a matter of tweaking the same cost parameters that control uh, that stuff in general. Uh, again, you know, a, a big part of the design goal of this was to reuse all million or so lines of existing code that already existed in PostgreSQL to the greatest extent possible and only change the things that actually needed to be changed in order to enable this, which was a good bit of change, but still very tiny compared to the total amount of code. Yes, Mikhail. Uh, so the question is, is the uh, gather node able to push down uh, things like a limit clause or some qual? Um, the answer to that question is the gather node doesn't really push anything down. And you can't, you in particular, you cannot push the limit below the gather node. If you think about it a little bit, you'll see that that would actually be problematic because then the limit would be applied by each worker individually rather than applied to the combined results of all the workers, which you wouldn't want. Um, in terms of pushing down quals, we don't actually need to do anything special to push the quals down because the core planner has already done that. The, the core planner has distributed the quals down to the individual relations. And at the point where we introduce the gather node, we're actually building back up toward the top of the plan tree. So anything that the planner was able to push down to the lower relations is already pushed down. 
and the gather node just has to not do anything stupid that would cause that to pop back up higher in the, in the plan tray. So it would actually be, in that particular example, it's actually quite hard to go wrong. Yes? So the question is, is the planner aware of other parallel queries that are going on? And the answer is no. Um, the only thing we have is we have a system-wide limit on the total number of background workers that can exist simultaneously. But parallel queries grab those in a greedy fashion. Um, and if a query cannot get as many workers as it budgeted for, it will just run the same plan but with fewer workers or even with no workers. Um, and of course, that could go wrong, right? If you exhaust the pool of workers uh, and, then you sp and then you spin up a query plan that is different from what the serial query plan would have been and run it with no workers or with very few workers, it may be bad. Um, so you should think about your max worker processes setting and configure that to something that's appropriate for your machine. You should think about your max parallel degree setting, which, control which limits the amount of parallelism within a single query and set that to an appropriate value. Um, and then you should complain about the cases where that's not sufficient. And uh, maybe somebody will improve that in the future, but not yet. Josh? So the question is, is there any visibility about the number of background workers that you are running or have run? Uh, the background workers do show up in PG stat activity, so you can see what's running right now. There's no statistics gathering about what has happened in the past. Yes? The question, yes, you can see the number of workers that will be spawned in explained plans. I'm just going to move on a couple more slides here uh, so that we finish on time. Um, I did a bit of TCP, TPCH testing and really just a bit. Uh, Thomas Vondra a few years ago put together a little toolkit uh, for running TPCH queries against PostgreSQL. Uh, it's, um, I don't know if it's the best toolkit for this, but it was easy to set up and it does seem to work. Um, TPCH involves uh, 22 long running queries that can take many seconds or even minutes to execute. Obviously, this depends on the data size. Um, I used an IBM Power7 box, which is a community resource, uh, which was donated to the PostgreSQL community by IBM. Um, and uh, I uh, compared the results of running a set of queries with max parallel degree 0, that is parallelism disabled, versus max parallel degree 4 four workers. Um, there were 10 gigabytes of input data in this test. The database size was 22 gigabytes, of which about 8 gigabytes was indexes. So 10 gigabytes of text file turned into 14 gigabytes of tables, plus another 8 gigabytes of indexes. Um, when I turned on parallel query, 17 plans used parallelism. Five did not change. Of the 17 that did use parallelism, 15 got faster. One was unchanged. And one got a little bit slower. Um, that turned out to be fixable uh, if I increased work mem to a reasonable value instead of the default of four megabytes. Um, then uh, the regression went away. It was 6% faster or something like that. So it, it didn't really turn into a win, but it wasn't very hard to make it not slower. Um, there were three queries that ran at least four times faster and 11 queries that ran at least two times faster. So overall, half the queries got at least twice as fast, which is pretty good, I think, um, especially for the first version of the feature. Um, my latest blog post has all of the details about what happened on a query by query basis, and it's sort of interesting to look at what the pattern was there. Um, obviously, this is not resource efficient in the sense that we're using a total of five processes and we're mostly speeding things up by about 2x, whereas you would like 5x, since you're using 5x the resources. But there are a lot of people who have extra CPUs that aren't doing anything, so you might as well use them for something, even if it's 
not perfectly efficient to make your queries faster. Uh, and obviously, we can, we can change things in the future so that, uh, so that this gets better. Um, I went through and did an analysis, a, a quick analysis of the query plans for these queries to find out um, what caused the query not to speed up as much as we might have liked. Um, there were three queries where the, the ideal join strategy is a merge join. We can't do merge joins in parallel, uh, so uh, those queries suffered because of that. Um, there were five queries where we needed a parallel hash table build because we were actually building a hash table on a very large table over and over again, um, and that wasn't great. Um, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven queries that wanted a parallel bitmap heap scan. Um, so that seems like a really important thing to try to get for the next release. Um, there were four queries that suffered from uh, our poor handling of subqueries and parallelism. One query that needed gather merge because it sorted a bunch of data, fed the result through a gather, and then sorted the result of that by the same column. Uh, so that could have been avoided if we'd had the gather merge variant. Uh, there were five queries where I wasn't really sure, and there were three queries where the query plan looked like exactly the query plan, the best, the query plan looked like the best query plan that I could think of for that query. So uh, this is kind of how I'm thinking about the stuff that I'm going to pursue um, and that people I work with are going to pursue in the relatively near future. Uh, our work is probably going to be guided by these results and trying to figure out how to make, how to add the capabilities that were a problem in these cases. Um, there is a lot of other work to do uh, aside from that, um, and uh, I hope that, that some other people are going to jump in and help there because uh, there really is an enormous uh, amount of stuff to do related to parallel query. Everybody's going to hit slightly different things depending on their workload and their use case. Um, and it's really fun to write a patch that makes a query run twice as fast. And you don't very often get a chance to do that uh, when you're working with existing PostgreSQL technology because too many of other people have already looked at that code. And you'll be lucky if you can squeeze 1% out. But the parallel query code is all new. So there's all kinds of things that are missing and all kinds of pieces that haven't been filled in yet. So you can write one patch and zoom, see something go away faster. So please do that. Um, yeah. Uh, you had mentioned a second ago about how people were using Python to look at the ambiguity in SQL. So I think the future people are going to have to take this a little bit more from you. But I think that I also think we should be thinking a little bit about the possibility of that kind of reduction of So the question is, if my system is already overloaded and I do a lot of parallel queries, will I make everything worse? The answer is yes. Yes, you will. <laughs> yes? How much cores does IBM system Oh, how many cores did the IBM system has? It's 16 cores, 64 hardware threads. The reason I'm only using five workers is because I've found that most queries don't seem to benefit very much from going beyond that right now. I don't really know why. I think with aggregates, uh, we should be able to go considerably higher in some cases. Um, but I think one of the areas where research is needed is people actually need to spend a lot of time running these queries, figuring out why things don't get better when you go from four workers up to 20 workers, and then trying to figure out how to fix those problems. Because if you do, you might be able to make that query run five times faster, which would be really cool. So please write that patch. <laughs> yes? Um, 
OK, so the question is, does this force us to rethink how we set, set shared buffers? I think the answer is no. Um, the parallel query use of dynamic shared memory for the kinds of parallel query that we currently have is pretty light. The uh, dynamic shared memory segment is going to be small. Um, I think actually many people, given some of the scalability improvements which have gone into recent releases, may want to try with a little bit more shared buffers than they've used in the past and see how that works and let us know because that is an area where some work has been put in. There's still a bunch more work that needs to be done there. But I do think we may slowly get it, be getting better at managing large shared buffers. Um, I don't think that what we've done here uh, pushes you in the opposite direction. Obviously with the caveat that if you have work mem set very high, that's actually the thing you're more likely to need to reconsider. If you have work mem set very high and you have max parallel degree set very high, then you might suddenly have a lot of workers each using a lot of memory. And that could be something that you need to worry about. But I don't think the shared buffer setting is likely to need to be rethought based on this. Although, of course, the best way to know is to try it out and report the results. Yeah. Right, so the, the, it was a two-part question. The first part is, how do other databases do on parallel query? My answer to which is, I don't know. I, if I thought about other databases, I wouldn't have enough time left to implement parallel query, so I don't. <laughs> uh, the second part of the question was whether there's literature on parallel merge joins. There's actually quite a bit, and I've read a bunch of it. Um, but I just haven't had time to turn that theory into code. Last question, and then I'm going to go on. So the question is, what happens if the input size goes up? Do I know how these number cha numbers change? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, I think there is a ton of useful work that people can do on parallel query by testing this out. PostgreSQL 9.6 beta 1 is out. Um, there are probably lots of outright bugs in parallel query. Uh, hopefully, most of them aren't too serious, but I'm sure there are some in there. Um, there are probably also many cases where uh, the performance is bad, right? It's either an improvement, but less of an improvement that you'd like, or it actually gets worse. And the only way we're going to solve those problems is if people test and then report what they find. Uh, and if people don't do that, um, you know, it's, it's just going to slow down the rate at which the feature gets, gets better. So yeah, please test that. Um, I guess I can actually keep taking questions for another two minutes because that's my last slide. Yeah, Stas. Yeah, so the question is can a parallel sequential scan change the order in which the rows are ret returned? Yeah, the answer is absolutely yes, right? So in a parallel sequential scan, uh, the workers are still claiming the blocks in the same order that they would have been claimed in a non-parallel sequential scan. But then all of the tuples that survive the filter conditions in any joins are passed through the gather. And there's no guarantee that the gather reads those results in exactly the order in which they were generated. In fact, it probably won't. So the gather will produce some some jitter, right? And there's also no guarantee that the workers themselves all execute at exactly the same rate. It could happen that one worker grabs a block and then gets scheduled out by the operating system for whatever period of time. Meanwhile, some other work scampers through several blocks. It could happen that one worker requests a block that has to be read from disk, while another worker gets several blocks in a row that are all in memory. And so in cases like that, you're going to see the result order shift around. Yes. Yeah, so Stephen is pointing out that we already have cases where this instability can exist, and it happens because of synchronized uh, scans. 
Parallel Query does support the synchronized scan stuff. It will start at the same point that it would have started, uh, that a non-parallel sequential scan would have started, um, but then there's some interleaving that goes on. That's all the time we have, but I'm happy to take individual questions afterward. Uh, thanks, everyone.